And there you go. Hey, good afternoon, everyone, or at least it's afternoon here on the Pacific Coast in Monterey, California. I'm Jill Zandy. I'm the Make Center Associate Director and Competition Coordinator, and I want to share. We have something really special planned today. Really special. Really, really special. Wait, what's that, Matt? What's that? No, 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 no. It's not a replay of the Eagles Super Bowl win, although that would be really, really special. I've only watched it about eight times now. But enough about the Eagles winning. We actually have, in addition to competition technical manager Matt Gardner, we have da, 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 Scott Frazier, our lead safety inspector, drove all the way up from Long Beach, California to join us today and work with Matt and take us all through this Ranger and Explorer safety inspection tutorial. So we're happy to have Scott. Again, he's the lead safety inspector for the competition, his day job, he's the chair of the electrical technology department at Long Beach City College. We're happy to have him. So, as I just said, we are going to do a Ranger and Explorer safety inspection tutorial. But not only is Matt, as well as Scott, not only are they going to walk you through the safety checklist, but they're also going to answer your questions right here live during our Facebook Live. Now, before we get started, I just want to remind everybody to hit subscribe. If you don't want to miss us doing a Facebook Live, you should see subscribe underneath your screen or, or where I'm talking, underneath where I'm talking. Hit that button and so you won't miss us when we go live again. And I want to give a shout out to Dylan, who's behind the camera. Yeah, he, Dylan never shows himself. We've got Newman, who is typically our camera person, but he's busy today. And then we've got Ryan over here. Once again, we're in the teammate <laughs> workshop, so they're working, building. We're going to try not to disturb them, but we're going to get through this. So, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Matt Gardner and Scott Frazier. Hey, hi, everyone. Welcome. So, I just want to say, uh, this is our safety tutorial. If you've been paying attention to um, our emails, we are going to have the Explore Mission um, Facebook Live in, well, about two hours. So, I just want to say, this is safety. Ask your safety questions here. You can save any mission uh, product demonstration questions for the next one, because we'll, we'll go through it there. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna run through, as, I, as Jill said, I'm gonna run through some safety stuff. Um, if you wanna follow along, there is a Ranger and Explorer safety inspection tutorial that you can kind of follow along with if you haven't read that already. If you wanna get there, if you go to the MATE website, marinetech.org, go to the ROV competition tab, pull down to its uh, mission specs and scoring, go into the scoring section of it, find your class, and down near the bottom you're going to see a link that's the Ranger and Explorer Safety Inspection Tutorial. So you can kind of follow along with some of the points I'm making, and that's also just a good um, PowerPoint to talk more about, about some of these safety issues. So I'm going to start with, um, there's their safety, there may be an initial safety inspection and initial safety inspection score sheet. So we do this for the international. It may be for those of you, well, Ranger teams going to a um, regional competition and those Explorer teams that go to a regional competition. Your regional competition may or may not be doing an initial safety inspection. So that's something you can look at your regional information um, document about or talk to your um, regional um, coordinator about if you have to do this. But of course for the international, all those documents that you turn in early, we're going to use those, go through those to do an initial safety inspection score sheet. And you can also find that score sheet if you don't know, well what are they going to be looking at for it's worth 20 points? What are they going to be looking at? You can go find that score sheet, it is posted online. <clears throat> and we're just, we're going to be looking at things like all the documentation we require is um, submitted properly and together. We do a SID review, um, SID review, a non-ROV device, which is some of the other things we, you know, the non-ROV power devices. Um, if you're using one of those, a SID for that. If you're using fluid power, a SID for that. Um, the design documents. So for the Ranger class, their OBS design with the release mechanism. For the Explorer class, it's their documentation on their lift bag release. And then finally, the company safety review. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the company safety review because that's really when you turn in your documents early, that company safety review, really what the Mate Center uses to, to evaluate your vehicle for safety. So again, um, for those teams going to a regional, Ranger teams um, attending regionals or the, the Explorer teams that go to regionals, you may or may not have to submit a company safety review beforehand Again, talk to your coordinator, check that regional inf information document. It should tell you 
what documents you have to submit. And of course, all companies that move on to the international, you're going to need to submit a company safety review. And what that is, a company safety review, is just a way for us at the Mate Center to get a look at some of the features of your vehicle and to evaluate it for safety before you come to the competition. We'll give you some feedback. And um, what we want is we just want a short description and <coughs> pictures of various items. And we just want to make sure that your vehicle is safe. And I'll talk about this later, but it's much better to know three or four weeks beforehand that you have an issue than the day of the competition you show up, you have an issue that you have to fix within, within an hour. Okay, so, um, so just some of the things we look for in that company safety review is that you have your Anderson power pole connectors. Red or black for Ranger, the blue Anderson power pole. This is the Anderson power pole SBS50 um, for Explorer. We don't want knockoffs. Um, we want the actual blue one. And I know that some teams um, can't get these locally, but we do now sell these through the main store, and we will ship anywhere in the world. So if you cannot get these wherever you are around the world, we can get you some through the mate store. And these are the, the Ranger ones, just those red black um, power poles. Yep. Um, properly sized fuse and fuse calculator. Sorry, all my, my stuff is uh, slipping off the table. So um, this year for Explorer, we're going to talk more about this, but for Explorer class this year, we have prescribed fuses. There's a little fuse and a little fuse holder. You have to use that fuse. Um, for Ranger, there's a, wide a wider variety of fuses you can use, but a good uh, blade fuse in the proper um, side. And then fuse calculations. You know, on your company safety review, you want to see your fuse calculations. I might talk about those a little bit uh, more. So propellers, you want your propeller shot and guard. I'm going to talk about all this more. We're going to actually go through some vehicles and do a safety review. But make sure your propellers are shrouded and guarded. And the judges are going to test this by a dowel. So Scott has his handy dowel here, um, which is uh, the proper size, 12.5 millimeters, 1.25 centimeters uh, across. Um, and so judges are going to test that. So you need all your motors uh, completely shrouded and guarded this year. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit, and I'll go over this later. Your non-ROV device. So this year, we're allowing some powered devices that aren't your ROV underwater, and uh, we, we want to just make sure those are documented. And in the company safe review, there's some other things, like your good wiring. So just go through. You can actually download um, and look in the manual. There's some stuff, and you can also look at the initial safety inspector score sheet to actually see what we're going to be scoring you on. And just make sure you comply with those. If you comply with those, it makes it much easier to pass your safety inspection. Now, a little bit more about the NRDs, non-ROV devices. Um, for, for Explore, this is your lift bag release device, if you're using power for that. And it's your inductive coupling power source, um, which, of course, is going to be powered. And then for Ranger class, it's your OBS release mechanism, again, if it's powered. If you're just doing a manual pull for either the lift bag release or the OBS release, um, you don't need to turn an NRD. It's only if it's, it's powered. Um, and really what we want to see is we want to see these documented so we can see what you did, how you did it, and just so we can make sure that it's, that it's safe and uh, whatever you're doing with, with power is being done safely there. Um, so to power the uh, NRD, non-ROV device, you can be, uh, use onboard batteries or it can be powered from the surface. Um, and especially if you're using onboard batteries, document everything really, really carefully because we really want to see how you're doing it just to make sure it's being done safe. Um, for onboard batteries, you're essentially for Ranger class and a lot of Explore classes, one of the ways you can do it is essentially one end of whatever battery container you have needs to be able to pop off. So if pressure builds up inside, that pressure is just going to pop off. And that's important because if batteries get wet, they start off-gassing, creates pressure inside, and if that is a completely closed system that won't open, you've got pressure building inside. And that's actually why we kind of disallowed um, onboard power many years ago is because we had a small pressure bomb when uh, pressure was building on the side. But we're bringing it back, and we just want to make sure that everyone's doing it safely. So one end has to pop up. So that means no screw-on ends, no latches that latch it on. It just needs to be water pressure holding that on, and if pressure builds up inside, that will pop off. Hey, we have a question. Yeah. Okay. Patrick Rowe. I hey, think Patrick. I think he knows the answer to this. But he still asks, how much does one newton weigh in pounds? 
Newton is used in the manual. Oh my gosh, now you're making me even better. <laughs> but, but I believe... Google it, Patrick. I, I believe 10 newtons is a kilogram. <laughs> so one newton would be one... One tenth of 2.2 pounds. Ooh, what is that? Newman, Sorry, Newman? Newman? Okay, Newman, Newman, Newman. But so, so essentially 10 newtons is a kilogram. 2.2 pounds are a kilogram. You can do the math from there. <laughs> okay, uh, but back to the, uh, the NRG list. So this is Explorer class only. If you don't want an in cap that pops up, pops off if there's pressure. You can get a 3 PSI pressure um, release valve and a Schrader valve. But if you're going to do that, um, you have to turn in specs for both of those. And those specs are due on March 16th, which is tomorrow. So you have to get those specs to me. I know we've got a couple teams who have sent in specs. I think I've approved two. One is pending. I sent them an email back. But if you're doing that, and that's, again, Explorer class only, onboard batteries, if you're using a, a pressure valve and trader valve, that pressure valve needs to be 3 PSI. Oh, my gosh. Can I say something yes. before I forget? So I know that I that people have there's a concern about the fluid oh, power yes. quiz that you registered you paid and you've not received the link to take it so our wonderful competition registrar Timmy Sinclair she is currently out of the country we all need to take a break every now and then we do not begrudge her that at all so no fluid power quizzes are going to be issued while she's away she gets back March 25th so you can expect to hear from her that week. We're not going to penalize anybody. We're not going to cause any, you know, any penalties or deny anybody taking the quiz. So just rest assured, she'll get to you when she gets back. I just want to point yep. that out because yep. you mentioned yep. deadlines tomorrow. So don't worry yep. if you haven't taken it. If you haven't gotten the link, we'll get. You, well, she'll take care of you when she gets back. Sorry, Excellent. Matt. Yeah, thanks. I wasn't going to mention that, but there are a couple deadlines that are tomorrow. One of which is if you're using the, the three psi valve and trader valve. That needs to come in to me by tomorrow, and I'm going to mention some others later on. Another question. Okay. Alsim Operations. Hello, Alsim. You'll have to tell me where you are. They do are we... in their original. They're over in the mountains. Oh, 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 there you go. Okay, do we right. have to show how much pressure is in the lift bag? No, for, for the for the lift bag, um, no, we don't need to know how much is in that. So, um, essentially, though, that lift bag, you know, hopefully, you, well, you shouldn't be pressuring any anything where it's above ambient. So, you know, if you have a lift bag, which well, I'm going to show later, and I think I showed on the Ranger, I believe your Ranger team, um, you know, if you have a hole on the bottom, you can fill up the lift bag, but the pressure is never going to get above ambient there. But no, you don't need to show us how much pressure is in there. If you do show us how much pressure is in there, hey, that's great, but you don't have to. Okay, so uh, just the last thing about uh, non-ROV devices and independent sensors must be documented with an SID, so if you're using power for those, make sure you have an in uh, a SID for those. And just again, especially if you're using onboard batteries, document everything really well so we know exactly what you're doing because we just want to make sure you're doing it safely. Okay? And again, it's much better for us to tell you a couple weeks beforehand that, hey, this is going to be an issue, than you show up the morning at the pool and it's like, this is an issue, fix it in an hour or you can't go. Okay? So, uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about, we're going to now talk about the on-site safety inspection, okay? And so your vehicle is going to go through an on-site safety inspection at the competition before you can get to the water. So if you're going to a regional competition, Ranger Class of Explorers going to a regional, probably going to be done the morning of. But for the international, we try and do it in advance. Um, and so you have to get past your safety inspection before you can get to the water and do your mission, before you can even get in the water to practice. If a safety issue is found, you are allowed to fix it. You do get three tries. So if a safety issue is found, the judges will document what those issues are. You can go off and fix it. You can come back again. If another issue is found, you go off and fix it. And especially on that third time, if you're coming back um, and essentially there's an issue and this is your last time to fix it, the judges, they're really going to try and work with you to, to fix that issue. Because we're not looking to disqualify any teams. We want to get everyone in the pool. So, you know, we're not looking to find some technicality to keep you out of the competition. We just want to, we, we, you know, we just want to make sure everything's done safe. So that third time, our safety inspectors will really work with you to really outline your problems and how you can fix those problems. So when you come back for your last safety inspection, you will very hopefully pass. Yes, unless you're a Patriots fan. No, anyway, we have a question. Okay. We have a question. Hey, Victor, just up the road. Um, for Ranger, do the onboard batteries need to be in a separate waterproof container or can they be included with the other OBS electronics? 
They can be with the other OBS electronics, but again, that would have to be your, an in cap for that, whatever you're housing your electronics in, would have to be able to pop off if that builds up pressure. Excellent, good question. Okay, um, so now before we get into, we're actually gonna do some safety inspections, I'm just gonna talk about some of the main issues that our safety inspectors find. And kind of number one is no Anderson power poles. You know, these are now pretty common, these are easy to get. But make sure, especially Explorer Class teams, this SPS 50, we don't want the knockoff um, or anything like that. We want the, the real SPS 50. Um, the SID, if you if you don't have a SID, so when you go to safety inspection, you should have your all your SIDs with you. I'll talk about them individually. But if your SID doesn't show a main fuse, that's a problem. If you don't have fuse calculations, that's a problem. And for that fuse, we want, actually want to see that fuse to have an actual fuse symbol. Um, you know, so, so go online, if you don't know what the official or fuse symbol is, you can go online and do a search, or you can look at the manual. We publish the, the acceptable ones in the manual. Scott, you have a question? I have a comment about the yeah. uh, Anderson Explorer class. Anderson makes two of the 50 amp power poles, an SB50 and an SBS, Sam Baker Sam. Make sure you have the Sam Baker Sam. Yes. And the way you can tell, <coughs> right along the edge here, right along the edge there, is for a panel mount. The SB50 does not have this, and it's a little different shape. They look similar, but they will not plug in the same. So if you show up with an SB50, it will not plug into the mate power supplies. Yeah. So yeah, very important. You know, and that's actually at the regional. Uh, sorry, at the international, we occasionally have teams show up, and and we want we want everyone to have the right connector so they can connect up to our power supplies and do their missions and get all their points. Um, so that's important. Um, so some other issues we find with us, if you're using fluid power and don't have a fluid power SID, um, pneumatic SID, fluid power SID, um, and essentially if your vehicle is using hydraulics or pneumatics, um, you know, even air washers, air, or, you know, simple syringe technology, you need a, you need that fluid power SID. Um, you know, and, and so that can be added to your main set if you want, or it can be on a separate page. If you're, you know, if you're, if you have a simple one that's just using syringes, pretty simple. A box that says syringe on the top, a box that says syringe on the bottom, and a line between them. If you're using something more complicated, an air compressor, things like that, we want a little more detail about, about, you know, your, all, all, all the details of that. Uh, the other SIDs you need this year, non-ROV device SIDs, descriptions, your documentation, your OBS document release, or your lift bag release documentation. Um, some of the other issues we found, no sharp objects, no glass, no fishing hooks to pick things up, not, nothing sharp that could damage the diver, the pool, anything like that. Uh, Non-waterproof motors, um, that's been an issue in the past. Um, you know, servos to open a claw that aren't waterproof. Every, all your motors need to be waterproof. Yeah, Scott. Brushless motors, yeah. if, you, if you're using brushless motors, they need to be sealed and if you're taking an off-the-shelf brushless motor that's an RC motor, you need to go through the sealing process of that. A lot of people say, well, they're fine, they're soldered, but those, those connections are accessible to the water. So we've had teams seal them. Other, they can actually buy sealed motors from some companies, and those are, those are acceptable also. But if you use an RC motor, you have to seal it with epoxy and provide uh, testing that you've tested it, that it, that it is indeed sealed. Yep. Okay. Um, and then, of course, the last one, which is new this year, so I don't want to say we've had this issue in the past, but we need your propellers to be completely guarded and shrouded. And I just want to I'll probably mention this again, but that's really important this year because if you come to the competition, competition day, and those aren't, that's going to be something that's really hard to do in an hour or two before you run, or maybe even overnight. So, so make sure that your propellers are completely shrouded. Yes. Questions? We have two questions. Good ones. Oh, and I hope I'm not uh -oh. going to butcher this name. Abhishek Muna for Explorer. Is it really necessary to have the Schrader valve and a three psi pressure release valve, or is there any alternative for it? Because we've been trying to find a three psi relief. Pressure relief valve, but we are able to find it, and it's been yes. two months. So, so I did. Someone asked this uh, online on the FA keywords. I did post a link that actually Scott found out and sent it to me for me to post. Um, but of course, the other option, if you don't have, can't find a three psi, 
and a trader is you can always have a, the ends that pop up. So an end that's just held on with pressure and uh, O-rings for your onboard battery. So you don't, you're not required to use the pressure release valve and the trader valve. That's just one of the options for Explorer. The other one is an in-cap that, that pops up. So right. that's it. And we have another awesome. question? Awesome. We have several more. Okay. Can we use DYI sealed servos? Um, what I DIY sealed servos? They're making an attempt to seal them. Yeah. We've always talked about that. They have to show that they that the servos are attempted to be sealed. Yeah. And uh, if they fail on you, they're going to fail on you. Yeah. So so yeah. I mean, you know, show us how you attempted to waterproof. You know, kind of document that or bring that up. Um, but again, all I know is I've. Teams have told me they're doing this task, and as far as I know, it's never worked, but maybe you can get well, it to work for you. It's, it's tough. Historically, we've had teams do that with the seal, with the servos, yeah. you know, and historically, it's a, it's it's, a massive failure. Yeah, yeah. And now this year, what is the depth of the dive well? 17, 19 feet, 17, I think. Yeah. And so that, 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 that is, yeah. that's sufficient to really cause those yeah. servos to fail. So think about it as you're doing that. Make sure it's something that uh, is yeah. completely waterproof. Yeah. yeah, and that's Explorer class. We'll go into yeah, that. Yeah, Explorer yeah. class is going down. Ranger class, I think, where it's about the international nine feet, your regional may have different depths. So. Okay, a couple more. more. So, okay. Alton Operations said, do we have to prove that the Blue Robotics T100 motors are waterproof? No. As purchasing the T100 waterproof motors, you have to... Provide the cut sheet of the motor, saying this is what we're using, so we're not, so we know that you're not using something else. We'll look at that, verify that yes, it is a blue robotics motor. Got it. Yep. Another one. All right, North Paulding. Hey, Nicola. Guarded means front covers as well, correct? Do you have a sample to show us? So I, I do not have a sample to show you. Um, we did have, if you look, I think it's in the manual. We list the uh, one that. A link to one that was 3D printed, and I don't have an example to show you. And unfortunately, both these vehicles we're going to test they are going to fail that aspect because they were built for last. Well, this one was built for last year's competition. This one wasn't built for competition, so they aren't um, shrouded properly. But again, front, back, sides. If this dowel can fit in and touch a propeller, you failed that. So, so um, you know, I know. My guess is a lot of teams are going to be 3D printing these, so you can go on and look for 3D printed files. I know that the one we published was was actually the front of, I think, a blue robotics thruster, um, things like that. So, but no, I, I don't have an example one. Okay, another question. Okay. All right, Abdul. Hello, Abdul. For the OBS, how do we seal the components that are on the frame? Also, do we have to use the same components that are stated in the props building manual? So for, if, so I assume you're talking about powering an OBS, um, how you seal that, I think that was the first part of the question, yes. how you seal yes. That's pretty much up to you. Um, you know, you could put it inside a container, again, if you have batteries in there, you know, one of those ends has to pop off. So, so kind of how that would work is you have maybe even a chunk of PVC or, or it's, it's acrylic nice. tubing that... Yeah. Actually, well, I, these are probably still on, but Dylan, if you yeah. come over quick with the camera, you can kind of see, I don't know if these are held on pressure, but they have some O-rings here, and, and, um, and so, you know, that's just held on. So you could have a tube and just positive pressure. So as you go down in the water, pressure's going to be pushing in on that can, so that could hold the ends on and O-rings. And then, of course, if something happens and you get a leak in there and the battery starts off gassing and pressure builds up in there, it just pushes that off, and, um, and you're okay. Well, your RV's not good, your RBS is good, <laughs> but there's not a safety. Yeah, yeah, hey, one more question. Okay, okay Nicola, a, a follow up to her guarded um, yep. propeller question. Does front and back of the motor need guard covering or just the front? Front, back, side, any. any place where you Any place, yeah. yeah. Any potential access yeah. to where a finger could come in. We've seen teams reach in to grab an ROV that was still functioning, there the propellers kick up and start running, and kids get their fingers yeah. cut. And some of the things, those propellers are sharp enough to actually inflict cutting on fingers. And so um, the fully shrouded thrusters are a direct response to uh, input from Oceaneering International. Yeah. 
they're really um, they're really pushing that. And so just so that everybody knows, we're not coming up with these things just out of the air to be problem child for you guys. We're responding to industry requests. Plus, our, our Band-Aid budget was cut oh, well, because for cough drops, because we're all sick. We're doing cough drops, and the Band-Aid budget's been yeah. cut, so it's just, yeah. 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 No Band-Aids. Band -Aids. No Band-Aids. Yeah. Bring your own Band-Aids. Right. But you won't need them because it'll be shrouded, right? Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so um, just so we're going to now start a, to do some safety inspections. I'm going to kind of be narrating. I'm going to have Scott kind of do the safety inspections. But just if you want to follow along, there are score sheets. So the same place you look, there are Explorer safety score sheets, the Ranger safety score sheets, and that's kind of kind of be our fire. I'm going to kind of do both at once. Um, so I have two vehicles here. This one is a tr uh, Mate Triggerfish RV. I'm going to kind of be using this for a Ranger class. Uh, I think that part comes first. And then um, one of our local Explorer teams, the Sea Sweepers, loaned us their vehicle. This is Brian and their control system. And they loaned us their complete vehicle um, to do our safety inspection with, since they're one of our local teams. So, thank, so thank you, Sea Sweepers. Yeah, thank you, Sea Sweepers. Came okay. in second place last year. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, they got second place in Explorer last year. So, so very, very good. Um, okay. So, the first part of this, and if you look, if you're following along, the first section is just about uh, your initial safety inspection. So, if you had an initial safety inspection at your regional or for the, the international, you'll have that filled out with how many points you got. And then there's just check boxes, excuse me, for if you're using, oh, sorry, if you pass the fluid power quiz, if you're approved for lasers. Um, okay, so the next part is ROV physical. Okay, and the first one is, are all items attached to the ROV secure? So the judge is gonna come around, poke and prod if you have a light vehicle. You know, I've actually picked it up and given it a little shake and make sure, you know, nothing, nothing falls off. So we want everything secure. Now I do know this one has a cord hanging down, it's probably for a sensor, I don't know what that is, but it's that's pretty secure. I mean it's not it's not doing anything bad, yeah. There's nothing. Okay. Someone's phone is gonna ask us. Okay. okay. So the next one is uh, hazardous items are identified. So, you know, we talked about no sharp objects, we don't want like knife blades on there or anything like that. But every so often, you know, to complete a mission, you need something that's maybe not like super sharp, but something sharp. Um, so if you have anything like that, just make sure it's documented or not documented, but, but you know, noted. So we've had teams before we required complete thruster guards to maybe say, you know, they put some, some yellow and black caution tape around there. So just if there's anything that could potentially be hazardous, just mark it, you know, make sure anyone who looks at your phone knows, hey, you know, that's somewhere there or there's something sharp. I don't want to put my hand there. Okay, so all propellers are completely shrouded. So that's where your judge is going to be using the cell. And of course, as I was saying earlier, these vehicles aren't going to pass because these were built for last year and we didn't have this requirement. So, um, but again, your judge is going to, if that dowel can at any angle reach in and touch a motor. So, uh -oh. yeah. so yeah, right here you can see this one doesn't work. But Good. now this is a half inch dowel. So it Yep, yeah, well, it's 12.7 millimeters, that'll be just yep, fine, yep. and we will probably be using a half inch dowel to do our test, and it gives you a little bit of flexibility as far as the IP standard, yep. which is a 12.5. 12.5, 12, 12 so, right. so you've got an extra 0. 0.2 millimeters to work with. <laughs> there you go, so, so but generous. what we'll do is we'll just, it, okay. as long as we can't touch the propeller with this, you're good. Yep. And then again, I kind of said this earlier, but this is something, just test this yourself beforehand, because I'm just thinking, this is going to be really hard to do to fix the day of. So I would say make sure that that it's done beforehand. Be a lot of Home yep. Depot runs yep. with chicken wire. Yeah. Okay. Um, no sharp edges that could hurt a person picking it up. So yeah, there's nothing on here. What if, what are the big things are zip ties? Yep. I've got an example right here, Scott. Okay. Thank you. So zip ties. If you're using zip ties to hold things on, and you Real cut it off, yeah, it's hard to see there. But this leaves a little kind of edge, and if you grab this, it can hurt. I've had little cuts from this. So you want to cut this, you can use flush cutters, or, yeah, we've got a pair of flush cutters over here. And that cuts it really down flat. Flush cutters are, of course, you know, designed to cut flat, so you can get that in there. You get it flat, and then when you grab that now, a lot smoother. So that's one of the things your judges look for. You know, if they see something like that, they may just rub their finger over it and say, hey, is that sharp? Okay, 
So now we're gonna to go to ROV electrical, and this is the ROV side, so, so part three. So tether is properly secured. Um, and so essentially what we wanna see is that if you pull on it, now this one it comes apart down there because I didn't okay. go down and screw it in. But we wanna see some strain relief here. This one, strain relief here. Um, for the Explorer class in the, in the uh, manual, we have some, some more advanced ones. But as we look at this one, as you pull on this, you come from this side. It's actually not pulling here. You can see this whole frame moving. So it's actually pulling on the frame where you want it to pull, not on those, not on those bars. And that's kind of what we're looking for, that if this gets pulled on, it's not pulling on solder joints or other you know, wires going into terminal blocks that could come apart. It's pulling on a frame and it's secured there. Okay, we have a question. Yes. Can I interrupt? Yes. On some operations, man, they're, they're on yep. it today. About the lasers, must the on-off switch be physically wired to the surface or can it be run through an Arduino with the rest of the system? Will we need to show how the on-off works during the safety inspection? So you can have it with an Arduino. So, I mean, as long as you, as long as you can turn it off from the surface. So Arduino, if you had a button that you hit on a keyboard or whatever that turns off, that's fine. Um, yeah, you should probably show that during your safety inspection. Now, one thing about that, have you guys got your laser? I'll, I'll talk about this later, but as far as I know, I don't think you're on my laser approved list. <laughs> and you've got a day and a half to get that in. Hey, and, and, Patrick, and I'll talk about that later. Patrick had a comment. A drop of hot glue on the cable tie cutoff will make it smooth. Thank you, Patrick. Good yep. point. Good point. Yep. Yeah, and another question. This is um, from Kin. May I know how deep is the pool for Explorer class? We talked about that earlier, and it's in the manual. It's in, it's in the manual, so go so look, in look in the manual. manual. Um, yeah, and it, it talks about it. Okay, um, so no exposed motors. So again, look at the motors and just make sure that, you know, they're, they're not the little um, exposed motors to water. You know, this one has, this one has the build pumps, which we know are good. These, so these yeah. are examples here. These are RC motors, and you can see that they were potted with epoxy. And then this team would documented their potting process and testing process of those RC motors. Okay, the next one is no copper or bare wires. This is on again on the ROV side. So again, the judge will just do a visual inspection and look to just to make sure, you know, there's no that everything's covered because if this is underwater, we don't want uh, well, electricity leaking the water, corrosion happen, bad things happen. Okay, so we're good there. And then again, wires, wire and splices are properly sealed. So just that anywhere that wires are joined together, they're properly sealed. And um, the best way to do it is pretty much hot glue and shrink wrap gets that tight seal. That's what we do with, actually we do that from ROVs from the simplest to the most complex. It's a good method. Okay, uh, next uh, onto the surface controls. So we'll open this box and we can do it with this box as well. So the first one is the single attachment point to power. So this is where they attach into uh, DC power there. So again, they don't have anything you know else branching off. It's, this is where their ROV gets power. And their fuse is within 30 centimeters. Yep, so I don't have to measure that one, although, you know, if it's close, your judge might get a ruler, but I can tell, hey, that's within 30 centimeters. Now, for, they, go they, ahead. They are using the wrong, this is last yep. year's fuse yep. holder, and we, if this does not have the fuse holder for Explorer class for this year, the fuse holders that are specified are rated for the Explorer class voltage. A lot of the ones that were being used were rated for only 12 volts, and that's why we have a specified fuse and fuse holder. And then for the Ranger one, again, you know, we're just using this. And again, I can just tell from vi from visual inspection that this fuse holder is within 30 centimeters. I think it's 15-ish, yep. And again, you can pop this open and they've got, this has a 15 amp fuse in it. So you could go up to 25, we'll talk about that in a minute, that, that if your fuse calculations say use the lower fuse, use the lower fuse. But that one's good. Um, and again, for, for both Ranger and Explorer, we've disallowed fuse breakers. Again, our judges, especially those from uh, Oceaneering, were just looking and, and found that a lot of the fuse breakers were, were just not good. So, yeah, the, yeah. the circuit breakers. Yeah, sorry, circuit breakers, not fuses, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So the next part is... 
surface control station is built in a neat workmanship like manner and this is where you can open up this box yeah the top looks good but you can open up and see their wiring and one of the things we also want to look at we'll talk about it a little later yeah that's pretty it's pretty neat system there um is I'll talk about this a little bit later, but 120 volts AC, if they're using AC in their controller, is separated. So they actually have a note, green wires, specify AC, they have their AC labeled, and so on. So a safety inspector judge know, hey, this is all AC, this is all AC, this is all AC, but everything else is DC. And again, we're just looking at good wire discipline. We can kind of follow the flow of wires through here. And one of the things we're looking for is components are secure and that they're not sitting around just laying in here, flopping around and everything. You know, what, the wire management and secure parts. The last thing we want to see is a team rushing to get their box on the deck and turn around and have something fall and then blow their uh, system out because things were not secure. Yep. Okay, I got, got a okay. few more questions. Jeez, they're coming in. Okay. The fluid power quiz explains that PVC piping does not meet mate specifications. Could you clarify, is this piping versus flexible tubes as there are braided PVC tubes that meet, that can meet the 140 PSI minimum? If it's, I'll, I'll, probably, I'll talk more about that in fluid power, but if, if you have pipe that says it meets, that's the minimum, then it's good. So, you know, you, Hopefully, a, a lot of them actually tubing has printed on there on the side what PSI it's rated for. So, if you have tubing that says, hey, it's rated for, uh, for that PSI, you can use it. Again, if it's not printed on the pipe, maybe bring the, the spec sheet with you and say, so you can show that judge. Because that's the thing, if the judge has a question, you want to be able to show that judge, hey, here's a spec sheet for this. It's rated to this PSI, which meets the mate qualifications. And that's a great point. Bring it with you. Yeah, Don't yes. run back and get it. Bring it with no. you. Yes. Couple yep. more questions. If our thrusters aren't properly guarded, are we totally disqualified or just getting minus on the safety check? You, it, well, you, if your thrusters are not completely guarded, you will not pass safety check, and you've got three chances to pass, and you have to have it, you have to have, essentially, yes, if you do not have your motor's completely shrouded or guarded, you, you do not pass. pass safety and you do not get in the water to do your mission runs. So, so, you know, just kind of a comment going back to that, is if you don't have 3D printed guards and you go on the front and back, you could possibly cover everything here with, with mesh wire or something that you can't get your hands in. So that would be an acceptable way that if you just covered everything on the outside, Maybe a handle so you can grab it. That would be okay as long as fingers can't get in there. Of course, that might make it harder for you to do repairs, but, but that is an acceptable way. Got it. Another question, yep. same person, Amir. If we didn't add a strain relief on the tether, but it's well connected to the ROV frame, is that enough? We, we want, no, we want good strain. We, we, we want to see strain relief. So tape isn't good, zip ties aren't good. We want to see a, a, some real strain relief there. Okay, one more, one more. All right, let's see. Wait a minute, let's get this. We, can we use circuit breakers in our surface control unit as switches? You use circuit breakers as switches. You could, if you have the fuse on your on your cable where you're attached to, to me, then you come down into here onto your box. If you want to have another circuit breaker to turn on and off the system, that's fine because that's in addition to what's connected to power for the mate power supply. But what we do not want to see is the power cord and then a big circuit breaker assembly hanging off the end here. It must be a fuse. Yeah. If you want to put all the circuit breakers you want, if you want to put 10 circuit breakers after that, you're more than welcome. I know that one of the things the judges meant last year is, yeah, there are big circuit breakers right here kind of swinging around and yeah. not, not being super safe. Okay, we good nope, to go? Nope, okay. we're good. Keep going. So, um, yep. where are we? So, tether secured at the surface control. So, this is the end of their tether. They have this uh, style of uh, where it you know, twist, secures twist in, lock. twist on, yep, twist lock. And you can't really see it on the back. It, this is super heavy. I don't know if we want to pick it up, but. Yep, pick it up. <laughs> but you can see that's going to, I think, I think, I don't know which one the tether plugged it into, but I think. It goes right there. It goes. Yep. Twist, secured. It's locked. If it's good enough for the Air Force, it's good enough here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and one of them is at the Air Force Academy. 
by the there way. There you go. And of course, he's going to make me turn it back on. <laughs> um, so the next one is, uh, again, as we look in here, you know, no exposed or bare wiring. So just, you know, making sure that there's no big amounts of copper hanging off that could touch copper on the other side. So again, and we'll look at the Ranger one real quick. You know, on this one, again, you know, especially when, when wires are going into terminal ports, you know, we don't want lots of copper, much, any copper hanging out because if that touches copper next to it, you've got a short, all sorts of problems can happen. You know, a lot of these things that we're doing as far as safety, they're not just for safety, they're for operational safety. And for your equipment, yep. if things happen, you know, good wiring practices will prevent a lot of failures. Yep. Okay, um, so all connections used are properly rated. So that means that, you know, when you're looking at whatever connectors they're using here and here, you know, whatever, whatever amperage and... You know, amperage and yeah, voltage, yeah, right. Amperage voltage. They're for just instance, the right ones. This circuit breaker they have down here, it should be rated for 48 volts. If it was a 12 volt circuit breaker, that would be an incorrect device to work. Now this up here, this is a, it's a switch, and that's an AC rated power switch. And it of course is labeled AC. There so, you go. Yeah. So again, proper rated stuff. We don't want you just, you know, finding, hey, this could work, and at the end there's the wrong, yeah. the wrong stuff. Again, safety. Okay, we got a couple questions. I'm not sure I understand this first one. How to use fathom tether and for what? I don't know what fathom tether is. You can use whatever you want for tether pretty much. I mean, we don't we don't have, you must use this kind of tether. Now, occasionally we do, you know, like for a fuse, this here for explorer, saying, hey, you gotta use this little fuse of various sizes in that fuel. I don't know what that tether is, but um, I think, I, I don't it know what it is. Be, it may be a tether from a phantom ROV. A phantom and, ROV? Oh, okay. maybe, it says so that, yeah. If, if they've got a phantom <laughs> ROV tether, go ahead and okay. use it. Yep. That's got fine. another one. And what do you use for to convert the voltage from 48 to 12 volts? Okay, that, that would be done down on your ROV, and it's done by making sure that your controllers can handle 48 volts. If you're using 12 volt electronic speed controls, then you're gonna have to put a DC to DC converter down there that'll run the 48 volts to 12 volts inside the ROV. And this is Explorer class since yep. we asked about 48 volts, okay? Ranger class is all 12 volts, but all of that has to take place. The speed controls, the voltage conversion, anything you do with that needs to be inside the ROV. None of that is taking place up here on the surface. Yeah, and for what you use, that's really up to you how, how you do that. So that's something you, you can figure out. All right, one more question, okay. sorry. Well, for now. May you be more specific on a real strain relief? Can we use a do-it-yourself one? Okay, strain relief, Kellum's grip. K-E-L-L-U-M-S, but it looks like a... Uh, there's a link in the manual. There's a link, thank you. It's a, there's a, it's a wire mesh, like the little finger traps. It's a, you yeah, put your fingers in and get them cut. Well, it's yeah. the same thing they make them for wire. That would be the ideal thing. In fact, that's what Oceaneering recommended. It would be attached on here, come out, and hold on to the cable up here. This is a cable gland. If you go any place and Google cable gland, you can get these. And what they are is a strain relief that when you tighten it down, the gland tightens down around the wire and provides a point of contact. Again, the, the point of contact is here versus a wire strain relief that would be this entire length here and that would distribute the pulling forces across this whole area rather than just here. Either one of them this year is acceptable. Just do it yourself. You know, I, if I, you know, I can't tell you if it'll work or not. Um, you know, just be more careful with the do it yourself strain relief. You I know, mean, we can get these at Home Depot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, these kind of things are, are fairly easy to get. Okay. Um, so that was it for that section. We're good for first. Okay, I'm gonna move on to a little bit about pneumatics and hydraulics. So of course, if you're not using pneumatics or hydraulics, just tell your judge, hey, we're not doing that, and they will skip that section. But if you are, of course, you have to pass the fluid power quiz. Now, Jill talked about, you know, we have a slight delay in that, which, which we, we've dealt with. Um, 
you do need a fluid SID, so you know, essentially a diagram of how fluid power is working in your vehicle. If you're using something other than water, you need to turn to turn in or have a MSDS, a material safety data sheet for, for that. Also, if you're planning on using something other than water or that one mineral oil that's listed in the uh, manual, you need to get that into me. I don't I don't think not many people use this, so it's probably not a big deal, but you need to get turn that into me by again tomorrow. Um, we kind of talked about this, but pressure lines have a minimum pressure rating stamped or verified. So we kind of talked about if you're using something, most pressure lines have their PSI or whatever rating printed on the outside, but we need to verify that. Um, attachment to the pressure source is secure a good connection to the source. Um, now we talked, you know, for, for Explorer class and Ranger class that move on to the International, um, we're probably gonna have some, some compressors there and we're, we're just gonna be using the quarter inch uh, quick, dis quick couplers there. Um, what are some other things? So, pressure vessels are rated to the prop, regulated to the proper PSI. Uh, pressure vessels have a stamped pressure rating or verified by specification. Pressure ve pressure uh, pressure vessels have a current inspection sticker, and they're secured to the pool deck. So, if you're using a tank or something that has compressed air, they're using. You know, it has to be inspected, stamped, up to date, secured. You know, scuba tanks. We don't want scuba tanks rolling around or potentially falling over. So just make sure everything's secure and up to date. Um, no hydraulic fluids are leaking, so you know we don't want any fluids, hydraulic fluids leaking out. And um, if you're using pneumatics, just uh, uh, compressed air or an inert gas. You know we don't don't allow anything other than that. Okay, so that's it on pneumatics hydraulics um, for lasers. Again, um, if your team has to be approved for laser, laser usage, and if you are planning on using a laser, you need to get both the specs to me for both your laser, and this year I need the specs for your laser safety glasses, and those are due by tomorrow. And by tomorrow we mean 11.59 and 59 seconds Hawaii time. So you got till, till essentially the end of day, tomorrow, Friday, Hawaii time. But I get those in. If you don't get them in on time, you're out of luck. You're not going to be able to use lasers, fluids, or whatever else we need. Um, lasers, if you're using a laser, that should be on your SID. Um, bring your laser specifications and your laser glass specifications with you to safety. I will, so, you know, after you send me, I'll be like, hey, you're approved, but you still want to bring those to your safety check. Um, we talked about this earlier. Someone asked, they need an on off switch that can be controlled from the surface. Um, lasers need to be. Powered by the mate supply, no no batteries for lasers, um, and there's a couple other rules. If you look at section the laser section, there's all those rules um, laid out. Non ROV devices, independent sensors. Um, so if you have one, and if you have one of those, and essentially for Explorer class, you are going to have one. Oh, sorry, let me go back to lasers. If you are on the approved laser um, list, you're going to have a, a staple to your safety inspection sheet. You're going to have a laser. Uh, safety checklist and that'll just go through if you're if you don't have one of these that means you weren't approved for lasers and you don't get to use those lasers the same goes for your non rov device specifications and, or independent sensors you're just going to have one of these attached for explorer since the power puck you're bringing down to power your obs for explorer you're pretty much going to need power underwater so you're going to have one of these um, so everyone will have one of these of course, if you're not using this, for if you're not doing that for anything, just tell your judge and they, they will skip that. But um, you can look at what is on that sheet. This is, this is published on the website as well. Okay, so coming up near the end here, so I'm wrapping this up. So if you have questions, get them in now. Um, and again, for the, the non-ROV, you know, I've said this many, many times, if you're a non-ROV device, if you're using onboard batteries, just make sure you really spec it out so we know what you're doing and we can make sure you're doing that safe. Um, I think that's it, you know, submitting, uh, have everything, you know, on an SID. So if you're using it, have an SID for it. Um, some general notes, I kind of talked about this earlier, but you get three chances at your safety inspection. Um, so just kind of make sure, you know, we have all these sheets published so you can actually go through I highly recommend, before you come to the competition, 
run through, maybe, maybe have your mentor or someone else run you through a safety inspection, do all this, and then you'll know that, hey, you've complied with all this. And what I'll say is generally, those teams that are prepared have done all this, their safety inspections go like a snap, it takes about three to five minutes, they get waved through, not waved through, but you know, the safety judge does all, like, yep, you're good, and then sit on it. It's the ones who, who haven't looked at any of the safety, haven't thought about that, really have some issues. Hey, we have a question. Yep. From Mohammed, can we amplify the output current from the converter, and how? Well, the how would be up to you. And you say amplify the output current. Yeah, now, can we amplification the output current from the converter? The output current or the output voltage? And, come on, Mohammed, be a little more clear. Yeah, we're Clarify here. what you're trying so, to do. So, so one, but one note on that is, I assume this is an Explorer class, um, you are so. limited to 48 volts, 30 amps, you can never go above that anywhere in your vehicle. So you can't bump it up beyond 48 volts at anywhere in the system, there you go. and you can't bump it up anywhere beyond 30 amps for the Explorer system. Same for Ranger, just 12 and 25 for Ranger. Okay. One, of, one of the things about that is, because most sonar systems yeah. bump up into 100, 150, 200 volts, that spec is prevented. And, you know, it's one of the things we don't want 300 volt unsealed systems running around with divers in the pool. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think I, I've kind of deferred some mission related questions to the next Facebook Good. live, but this one I believe is relevant. Fuse calculations for the lift bag release mechanism, are they needed? Well, no. Um, for, the, for your for your lift bag or for the Ranger, their OBS release mechanism, I believe you're limited to 12 volts, three amps. I can double check that, but that's, I believe that correct. yeah, I believe that's correct. Now we don't need fuse calculations. Right? If you want to, add, well, especially the fuse calculations are really for your ROV and what's because, running through this fuse right. and this it's, connector. It's for, the, it's for the motors, the yeah. motors primarily. And the comment came from an industry again. You're protecting that particular device at 40 amps when they're only drawing 15 amps, so really that device is not protected. Yeah. And that's one of the things I kind of forgot to mention. The fuse calculations, if you go through, let's say you have an Explorer class vehicle, you do your fuse calculations and it comes out to, let's say you're using total 12.8, you know, well, let's go to 12 exactly, you multiply that by 1.5, that's 18. You don't go, oh, we're going to put in a 30 anyway, we're going to put in a 20. So essentially, Whatever your fuse calculations come up to, use the next fuse size up. Or, you know, if it comes out to 20.3 with that, once you've already multiplied it, maybe think, hey, we can use a 20. So, you know, okay. we want to make sure everything's secured so that if you're only running 12 something and you have a 30 amp fuse in there, you can burn out components or something bad can happen. So, yeah, hey, a few more questions. Okay. From Altum Operations. Good. I'm glad you're here, yeah. Altum. If we have a waterproof and tested wire plug underwater, would it be considered safe? How would you like us to prove it is waterproof? So you mean a like a connector, a I assume a waterproof connector? Um, sure. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. What I, you know, spec provides. Yeah. The inspectors are going to look at it. And if it looks safe and everything, they're going to be, you know, you're going to tell the inspector, we built this, we tested it, it's fine, you show your test results. The best way to test something is to put it in a bucket of salt water and run a megohm test on it. Yeah. And use a megohm meter. You can get really simple megohm meters. And they're different from all meters because they'll typically do the testing at either 250 or 400 volts. I have another question. Sure. For Explorer, if we are using the check valve and dump valve on the lift bag, do we need to submit the spec sheet of the dump valve and check valve by March 16th? So I, I assume you are getting a commercial one. So no, if, if it's if it's a uh, so the only the only thing that I would need is if you have onboard batteries with that container has both a three psi and a Schrader valve. I need those specs. But if your lift bag has an opening that you can open and close to let air in and out. We don't. I don't need the specs for that. Now you will want to outline that on uh, specification sheet, but that doesn't need to be turned in now or tomorrow. I, th I hope that answered your question. Another question. Okay. Hey Victor, does each SID still need to be on a single sheet? 
and the OBS and ROV SIDs are separate SIDs, yes. correct? So, so yes, you need your, essentially your ROV SID needs to be on one sheet. If you have fluid power, your fluid SID SID, that could be a separate sheet. Now, if you want to combine them, that's fine. Um, for your NRD, if you have an NRD, that can be a separate sheet. If you want to combine it, that's fine. So you can always condense down, but each SID should be one page. So your, your ROV SID, both top side and bottom side should be one page. The intent on that is we don't want 30 pages yeah. of SID. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. Okay, so um, that's pretty Lock much it. it. Right now. The last yeah. few notes, you know, think safety. There are lots of ways to do all this that is safe within the specifications. Um, so, you know, think safe, have a fun time. And lastly, if you do have further questions, post them to the FAQ board. I get to it. Hopefully two, three times a week. I know the last I haven't got to it since Monday since I've been busy preparing for this and the next one I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll get your post your questions on the FAQ board in the competition help form, and I will answer them there as soon as I can. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's I it for think, me, everyone. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and just just to follow up, I want to thank Scott and of course Matt for for doing this. It was a big, lots of great questions. So thanks everybody for writing in. We'll take a little bit of a break and then we'll do the Explore class prop demonstration and question and answer session at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So. You guys, we have an hour. We can watch an hour of the Super Bowl replay. Let's go. Oh, listen Let's to do you. Do it. All right, we'll see Wait, you in an who hour. Is, who was in the Super Bowl? <laughs> who was in the Super Bowl? All right, we'll see you in about an hour. Explorer class teams, tune back in.